onto the three inch bow in, in Stern guns. The kit part's K5 and you get a photo wet shield as well. The actual kit parts, it's actually a very nice model and it's slide mode as well because hopefully you can see it's got a bit of a bore on it so it's actually quite nice but we'll replace that with the Pontos so we've actually put the Pontos instructions into a, an A3 folder and we can see the three inch gun bees on page three of the instructions now there is an error here where it says 794, 795 and 796 is the three four wedge parts. They're actually 78s. So it's 784, 785, and 786. And also the brass uh, 6D, it's actually E. We'll, we'll see the brass in a minute. So that parts are in uh, the four wedge fret number 11. So again, I've got another folder here for A5. And just keep all the frets safe in here and you can see the numbers here. So we actually need fret 11, just this one. And I still keep them in their own onto sleeves as well. So here's the parts we need. 784, 785 and 786. And there's only four of these parts, so that's the right ones. So we need that now. So we'll keep that out. And we also need turn brass 6 and 4. So if we spin around here, spin this out, we need to turn brass uh, four, this one, and six. Okay. So four is all the gun barrels, not just the four we need, but the other uh, 14, I think it is. And then, as you can see, Brass 6, A, B, B, C and E. It doesn't mention D, which the plans does, but this big block here is the D in the plans, but it's actually E. Avoid cutting photo which directly on the mat, because what happens is when you press down, the part potentially will distort before it cuts through. So do it on a hard surface. And I like to just use uh, an old DVD or CD for that. And then that way, it's not going to sink into the mat. So when I moved the camera, for some reason it didn't record, but I've cut out all the parts now. So the shield framework, if you like, and the other part of the shield, got the four barrels, and then we'll have a look at these next. So we need this base pedestal at the end, and that's the one that's either D or E. I'm unsure, this is the first time I've done these, so I'm unsure we just snap them off or... I guess so. So we need the four uh, pedestals. And then we also need this part at the end, which is part A. So that's kind of worked as well. So the remaining parts in here, which is a uh, B, B and C, even I think that's wrong, I think it's only one B and two C's. Anyway, these will go back into the bag and we keep these parts. What we'll do is I'll just, just put these back into here for safety. And then, as everything's built up around this pedestal, what I thought I would try is I've made a, just an MDF block and I've bored a two mil hole. So we can put these in here and then I can work off, work off of that. I'm not sure how, my, how this will work, but we'll give it a try. And I put it right on the corner so I've got access. And I put the hole right through so at the end we can just poke something through there to pop them off. Okay, so we'll put that aside now for the time being. The next thing is to clean up and fold this framework. So as you can see, one side's got, or hopefully you can see, one side's got a lot of detail on it, and then the other side's kind of flush or flat. So we want to make sure we fold up the sides to expose the, the nice like bolt detail and whatnot. Okay, but we still need to clean these up. And then while we're at it, we'll clean up the two parts of the shield. So what I like to use for removing nibs or the foot wedge is these little foot wedge scissors. If you can remove them 
cleanly, you actually don't need to file. So you just hold it against one side and then just close the scissors and then it cuts off the nib. Okay, so that's that. This one's got a nice big nib on it, I think you can see, so. I think that was one right there as well, okay. So just for completion's sake, we'll use a diamond file. This is a Tamiya file number 400, and it's, a, it's got a diamond surface on it. So you just come in. You need no pressure at all. Just a few swipes. It's hard to see in the camera, but it doesn't take much for the file to remove the, the nib. I'm not going to use it on this part. I think I clipped it close enough. Uh, very fine, I don't want to damage it. So let me clean up all the other parts and then we'll come back. So with the parts all cleaned up, we'll do this frame here. So as mentioned, there's a lot of detail on the upside. And then you can see the center hole fully for the mounting point. And then it's all flat on the inside. It looks like some of the bends are upwards. So that's all the parts cleaned up. We'll start with uh, this framework next. So as mentioned, there's a lot of external detail like bolts and various reliefs and whatnot and then on the back side it's all flat as you'd expect before it would. so we need to make sure we bend it in the right direction so when it's folded the detail is on show uh, there's a couple of bend lines here which means they'll come up and there's a couple of bend lines there which will come up as well so we'll make a start on that now I don't actually own bending pliers, but I've got bending tweezers, so I haven't had much success with them in the past. I find them awkward, but we'll give it a try anyway. I think the problem with them is if you put, if you when you press them together, it's in a point and then the, the gap opens, so it grips it on there, but the foot which is free to pivot around that point as opposed to them being parallel and gripping evenly. So I found when you squeeze them and get positioned, you actually have to squeeze really tight to close the, the gap. We'll persevere and see how we get on. Okay, so we'll fold that up to 90 degrees. It's a wee bit over, over folded. Let's push it back a bit. Okay, so that's our first one. See, like that's a gripping, but it's able to spin which is annoying. Okay. So that's the two folds. I just need to check the bars. So we fold it up, but we need to get these arms folded out into this shape and that'll be for the, to hold on to the shield. I might just try my normal tweezers because they grip flat up more along. Okay. So I might just be able to Okay, so once you get started and then the two two last bits on this side is a fixing point against the shield. So that's not too bad. This has been bent. It needs to be further. Okay, so I'm bending in the right direction so far. Now this, so that top part there needs to fold out about 45. So it needs to bend out about 45 degrees. That's a bit too much. I have to be careful because you can only bend these once, maybe twice. 
and then they'll start snapping. So try and get your bends in properly. I think one more bend will do it. So with that bent, this way 45, the top strip needs to go back the other way 45. Okay, let me try one more thing. Got some eyelash tweezers here. But they've got a nice flat uh, surface. So if I can grip that part. Okay, so that's hopefully you can get a good view. That little fine point is quite awkward. So that side here comes up, up 45 and then up 45. <coughs> and then hopefully you can see there's a hole in the base. And it'll fit over the hole on the pedestal, or the peg in the pedestal. Uh, yep, so that fits on there. Okay, so I've got some super glue here. Hopefully you can see it's flat down on the pedestal. Okay, so I'll bend the rest of these up. Oh, actually I'll go attach the other part. So I'll attach this, what I'm assuming it's like a gun sight. So I think just a couple of points at the front. Okay, so that's, hopefully you can see that's the gun sight there, I presume. So that's kind of one done, except for the barrel and the shield, so I'll get to the same point in all the other ones. Okay, just before I move on to the other, other bits, I found if we do the, the gun sight part first rather than last, so it's easier to see the angles as well, or to judge the angles, so if we go 45 first, that way, and then if we grab the very top and go 45 back, that top edge there is uh, parallel with the main body. So it's very hard to see, but you basically the main body is flat, come up 45 and then 45 so it's flat again and it's a lot easier to see and judge and bend first and then we'll just come in and do the, the major folds after that. So that's all four done. Bend the shape, attach the pedestal and the gun side. Okay. So we'll do the shields next and as you can see there's little wedge marks and that's where we bend it on the curve initially. And then on the top plate, there's a cutouts for the barrel in the side, and you can see the edge line for the fold. Okay, so we'll start bending this first. Normally, we would get a bit of foam, and then we and then we would uh, use things of various diameters to start rolling. I want to try just doing it on the mat and bending the piece by hand, because uh, I, I don't want to put too sharp a corner or edge on the very front of it. So what I think I'll do is I'll try pressing it hard against the mat and then coming in with the tweezers. And then we've got a nice curve. I did do one practice one and it's very Humpy or very sharp, which I want to avoid now. So, and we'll keep test fitting it uh, onto this before we bend that one as well. So it's a fair bit to go, but that's okay. We'll start bending in the sides. So we we'll just keep trying against the. Uh, so now that we've got the front established, I can probably start bending the sides a bit more. So using a slightly smaller bit. Close. So I think we can actually just grip it on the flat here and just give it a bit of a So we just keep working it 
doing little adjustments at a time. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, before we bend the top plate, I don't know if you can see from the flat section, it's not an angled and straight, it's angled and got a curve. So we need to try and put that curve in just to this bit here. Might be able to get a bit of a roll. It's going to be hard because it's such a small Got a bit on it, probably not. This bit's okay, this thicker area, probably not so well. It does have a curve on it. We'll give it a try anyway, so. Okay, so hopefully you can see the angle. We might have to bend it a bit more. Need to bend this a bit more. It's actually not too bad. So now I need to decide am I going to set it on top or am I going to put it in between? Okay, I think I'm going to set it on top. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll just apply some tape. Okay, so with lots of tweaking and manipulating and whatnot, I've now got into a position where I'm more or less happy with. So I'm actually going to solder it, or give it a try soldering, see how we get on. So let's have a go at soldering the shield. So I'm going to use this DCC Concepts uh, Liquid Flux, it's a sapphire, and we'll use their 179 sapphire flux cord solder as well. So what I'll do is we'll just little parts of solder off. So just need little bits of it. Okay, so just this little uh, slippers that we'll apply. So we'll get the shield next. So I'm only going to do one side at a time. So we'll get the flux. And we'll just apply a libre. And then we'll apply the bits of solder. So that's the solder applied. Hopefully you can see it. So we'll get the solder now. This is just a cheap, crappy, crappy one from the hardware store, but see how it goes. Okay, so hopefully you was able to see, we'll just do the other side. So same deal, we'll just apply the, the flux. And we'll just apply the heat again. So the front of the shield, the front curve, didn't work so well. Let's see if we can get a bigger, bigger bit just in that front edge there. Okay. Okay, so I've got too big a gap. I've got too big a gap on there. So I'll have to fix that up. It's not the best, I mean, it's not too bad. It's, it's a strong joint anyway, but uh, we'll just clean up some of these edges. So here's my two practice ones I've done previously. And uh, they actually <laughs> came out better than the ones to show you. But you, you get the concept anyway. And then these were just filed clean up edges. 
because it's very hard to get the edges to get perfectly aligned. So to clean them up, just use various sanding sticks. Uh, this is what, 600, no 1200. So I've got a bit of an overhang on this edge here, but we can just clean that up. That's going to clean up okay. For this gap at the front here, I'm just putting some uh, super glue and then we can fire that as well. Okay, so I'll just, uh, what to do as well is just to neutralize any of the flux, just give them a wash in water or IPA or acetone or something just to get rid of the flux. Okay, so let me finish cleaning these up and then we'll, we'll come back. So here's the shields all cleaned up. Uh, they're not too bad they're for the first, first attempt. I think once I get the process down, it'll be a lot quicker with that. So what we'll do next is we'll test them against the, the mountings. So these little wings here are what glues or what fixes the, the shield, so... I might just need to do some tweaking. I'm going to do this with the barrels off initially just to see how we're going to go on. That one's not too bad. So the instructions aren't very clear just how far back they go. If you can see this little plate here, I think it goes maybe a plate distance on. From what I can tell, they kind of go maybe that far in. So it looks like these arms here need to come back. So I might just do that off camera, so just tweak them. Yeah, so these arms will come back at an angle. So let me try and do that now. What I think I'll do next is uh, install the gun barrels because it will lock the two sides and allow me to, to do the bends. So hopefully you can see, but on the plans, on the diagram, there's a shoulder here and a shoulder there, and then there's a bit of a gap. Now you probably can't see because I can barely see it myself, but there's a slight mark on the barrels. So I'll just highlight them uh, with a permanent marker and then that will be the position uh, that I install them to the framework and then that will give me the two shoulders forward of that which would match the plans. So we'll just mark these up. Okay, so they're all marked up. What I've done is I've squeezed the two sides closer so the barrel doesn't drop down and I'll apply glue to that face, the two inside faces. Okay, so what I've done is the barrel's in level and the top of the barrel is flush with the top of the side frame. That's so how I've done it. Hopefully that's the correct position. Okay, so I've got them all in now. So what we'll do is we'll just leave these go for a while and then we can come back in and do the shields. You can see the gun sight or that thin piece of brass in front of the turned gun sight. I've had to bend each one of them to try and get the shield aligned with the hole. We'll come back and see. So I've installed one shield and it's not going as back as far as I thought it would. But what I'll do is, you can see the little tabs hopefully. I'll just glue one side by putting some glue in and then squeezing it together. And I'll do the other side after rather than try and position it and glue it. So we'll come back after that and have a look. Okay, so that's all the shields done. They're ready for paint now. Look, they're not too bad. Relatively happy. Uh, the big lesson learned is the gun sight bracket where I'd initially bent it 45 and then explained it as per the things. It should only be 30. So the, the slot in the shield for the gun sight is very small. So 
that slight difference in the bend angle affected it and I've got a, got a feeling that's what caused the shield not to go as far back but even if it was lined up I think the hole in the, the shields or the slot in the shields it's too small for the gun sight to go through anyway let's keep moving on and we'll prime and paint so as usual uh, Mr Finishing Surface Hour 1500 Grey will be from a prime coat I've just super glued them onto uh, toothpicks just for just the whole thing. Okay, I'll continue on. Okay, so that's all the guns primed. I'm not sure you can see, there's one or two gaps in the shield front. If they were in a more prominent position, instead of being hidden down in a hole, I would have fixed them, but to be honest, these are barely going to be visible as it is. So, so we'll go into the top coat, and again, using LP14, it's the IG and Grey Mizura Arsenal. Okay, so that's a gun spray up, and I'm calling them finished now. Turn up not too bad, I mean. a great deal to them but so I'll put them aside for the time being there's a bit of work to do in the hull before we install them but that will be covered in the next video